So for this problem, this actually ends up being a limiting reactant problem. They gave you a lot of information, um, meaning volume, for both of your reactants for this equation. So you need to test which one is limiting first and then move forward with whichever one's limiting. You can do the rest of your calculations. with. So let's start with figuring out what our limiting reactant is. So let's test the HCl first. So we know that we're starting with 0 0.1500 liters of the hydrochloric acid. So let's figure out how much energy can be produced with that. So we're gonna go from liters to moles. So that uses the concentration. And then we use the balanced equation to get 4.2 kilojoules released if the HCl is limiting. Now we have to test the sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide has 0 0.05 liters. So we're gonna use the concentration to get to moles and then the balanced equation to get to energy released. So since the sodium hydroxide test, the sodium hydroxide could only release 2.8 kilojoules of energy. That makes the NaOH your limiting reactant. So any other calculations that we have to do, we're going to do with the information from the NaOH, not the information from the hydrochloric acid. So let me get rid of that. So now the next part, um, because the sodium hydroxide produces a smaller quantity, it's limiting. Um, so we cannot release that 4.2 kilojoules. We can only release 2.8 kilojoules. Okay. So now we can take that value and we can actually work through to figure out um, what's going on with the specific heat capacity. Okay. So we know that energy release is going to be um, 2.8 kilojoules or uh, 2,800 joules because when we use specific heat capacity, if our specific heat's in joules per gram degree Celsius, we want to make sure we're matching the units. So we've got 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius um, times the mass, which was 200.0 grams, and that mass is the the mass of um, the solution altogether times the temperature change of uh, oh that's what we're solving for times delta t so we'll solve through delta t ends up being 3.3 .3 degrees celsius and so um, this is actually ending up being an exothermic reaction because the temperature is going to increase by 3.3 .3 degrees Celsius. So it's going to go from uh, 48.2 degrees up to 51.5 degrees.